Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So in my last video, if you watched it, I was sorting out a load of my fossils ready for me to wash slash prep them. These are the kind of fossils that don't really need much work, they're just a bit muddy from when I found them. So I've got a lovely tub of water here which does actually match my nails. That was unintentional but it kind of looks good I think. Um, so I've taken all the fossils out ready to wash them so I'll move my camera um, so you guys can see. I'm going to let them soak for about 10 minutes in warm water just to soften the mud and then I'm literally just going to wash them with my hands and see what happens. So I'm hoping a lot of them will only need water to clean them up but there might be a few that might need a little bit of a nail job. Um, and before I jump into this video, does anyone know what glue to use to stick fossils back together? I have used super glue in the past but I've got a fossil about this sort of size that's in three pieces and I need to prep it. So. I, I remember in my last video I asked and you guys said glue it first so I'm going to glue it first and then prep it but what glue do I use like is there a really strong one I can use like what do you guys recommend because I've never done that before so um yeah just pop it down below if you've got any suggestions that would be amazing um but I'll just move my camera so you guys can see me pop some of the fossils in but if you look here we've got like some big ammonites here and it's pretty much just it looks quite muddy in the middle like it might need a little bit of cleaning up and I don't think the center it might all be there we'll see but you can see here the rest of the ammonites kind of like broken up a little bit so it, it might be there it might not but these are really muddy ammonites like I think I might need to get a few tubs of water because that's gonna get dirty real quick so yeah I'm just gonna move you guys so you can see and then we'll start popping them in okay so here's the tub so i'm going to start with the big ones because i think they'll need the longest to soak so i'm just going to let them sit in the warm water and i don't know if you guys can oh i think you can see it you can see the cloud of mud that initially comes off and then hopefully once they've sat there for a while it will more and more will come off so um that's the biggest one and then i've got this one here so i'm just gonna pop that one in I'm not sure if you can hear it but they're kind of like making little like bubbly sounds kind of like rice krispies would in your bowl where the water's really getting in so i just had to look it up again because i always forget this is a nautiloid because it's extinct now not a nautilus which is the living species so i always get confused by that so thank you for the people who very kindly explained that in my previous video video it was very helpful um but you can already see the mud is starting to like make it look a lot you can see like the chambers a lot better already so we're going to leave those to soak a little bit longer i'm getting very muddy just touching those and i'm going to put a few more in so here we've got a lovely bit of an ammonite quite a big one as well it looks like a harposterous ammonite if you know your ammonites um this is a lovely hildoceros so i don't know if you guys will it focus like that so there's some really nice ones which i think I might just put in a jar all together or something like that. I haven't quite decided where I'm going to put them yet, but once I process them, they need to leave the garage basically. So I can, so there's so much stuff here to sort. I really need to start getting it moved. So I'm going to put, these are just all the little ones, which are very, very sweet, but they're just a little bit muddy. So a nice wash should do them very well. Nice bellum night. So we just pop all of those in. And then that's the last fragment going in. So I'm just going to leave this to soak now for about 10 minutes. And then I'm going to get a towel ready so I can give them all a bit of a scrub and then kind of like just lay them on a towel to dry. Um, and I might need to wash them like once or twice because this water is already quite murky. But um, should do the trick. <laughs> Okay, so I've got the towel ready. It's been about 10-15 minutes, so the mud should have like softened a lot on them. Um, it's going to be a bit hard to get it all off because the water is so murky now. But um, I'm going to do my best, so I'm just, I might have to re-wash them once more. Because I'm not using a brush on them just yet, I wanted to see what would come off just with my hand. So this is the first chunk. Just dry it off a little bit for you guys. So um, a lot of the mud has gone, especially from like the little grooves and the gaps here. So you can see a lot of the ribbing now and the sutures. So it's done its job. So maybe one more wash and this will be not muddy anymore. It's already a lot better, but I think with some of the, the bigger one, especially, I might not be able to get into the middle of it without a brush. I try. <laughs> okay, 
So it's done a good job. So it's just starting to rain, so I'm sorry if you guys can hear that. Hopefully my microphone will stop it, but it's raining just outside my garage, so sorry if it gets a bit noisy. Um, so this is the big one now, so you can see the middle of it. It's kind of, all the mud has come out of it, so it's not all there, you can see it's missing. But the more mud that comes out, the more depth the ammonite gets, so you can see all the details a bit better. So this is turning out to be a lovely little ammonite. So I think I'm going to need a brush on this one to really get most of the mud out, but it's lifted pretty much everything out the centre that I think is going to come out. So it just looks like that. And then the back of it stayed pretty much the same, just a lot of that sort of thick mud has come off of it, which is nice. And I like this. Can you see? Look at all the chunky sutures. Like, they kind of look like jigsaw pieces, how it's been like deformed slightly before it got fossilised. I think that's pretty cool. So we'll let that one dry. So... This is just another fragment, but again it's got really pretty ribs on it, very, very clear ribbing. So these are the types of ones that I might donate to schools, um, or to anyone who wants them really, just because I don't think I need all the fragments if I've got, you know, nice whole ones, so I need to make some decisions because otherwise I'm going to have no space for anything. Because <laughs> I, I don't just collect fossils, I've got a lot of clothes as well, so that's where the trouble comes in. Oh, and shoes, got a lot of shoes. So we've got to make all my collections work together. So this is the broken but still has its centre ammonite which I think is quite pretty. I think it might sit quite nice or it kind of sits forward actually, it like flops. So, yeah, kind of stands. Not bad. Oh, and look. It's all crystallised down its chambers. I didn't notice that before I cleaned it. Very pretty. I love crystallised ones. So, give this one a clean. So this is another crystallised one. You can see all down there, which is really nice. So this one hasn't changed much, I don't think, but it's just not muddy anymore. So it's just a nice fragment of an ammonite, but obviously you can then see the, the crystals in its chamber, which is a nice add. So which is this? Oh, this is the, is it Nautilus or Nautiloid? Nautiloid, that's the fossilised one. I will get there one day, I promise. It's like brachiopod and bi bivalve. I've only just learnt which one's which. I always would get confused otherwise. Right. Nah, nah, nah. Just give this one a dry. This one's still a bit muddy, I think. Is it? Not too bad. So this is just the chunk of a nautiloid, but you can see nicely all the chambers and how they kind of join together. So. I think it's quite a nice piece, but again this is just kind of like a pebbly piece, so I'll put this with some of my sea-worn ammonites, like in a basket, um, and then I just have to work out where to put the basket, but I think it's kind of cool nonetheless. Yeah, something different, it's not an ammonite, <laughs> which is a nice change for me. So that's that one. Aha. So this is a nice piece. I love it when the ammonites are still in their rock as well. Like I just think they look so, just so nice and interesting. And I've got to say, this isn't a bad ammonite. It's not whole, but, and it is broken here, but it's got a lot going on, which I think is kind of cool. Like you can see the sutures and the ribs, and you can also, you can see the keel still, even though it's in its rock, going around the edge. So I think it's a nice piece. It's something unusual. I think every piece is a nice piece, isn't it? <laughs> I never have anything bad to say about fossils. Right. This is another crystallised piece. So, that's what that one looks like. 
So again, nice kind of like pebbly piece. One day I'll find a whole crystallised one and I'll slice it perfectly in half and polish it. But for now I love my imperfect, imperfectly perfect ammonites. I don't mind. So this one here is another fragment. But you can now see the suture lines really pretty. Look at the detail on that. I just think it's so amazing what nature can do. That's gorgeous. So I kind of, I think I need a basket for the nice sea warm ones and the nice like pebbly ones like this type thing. Then I need ones for the fragments and then the really nice whole ones I need to work out which ones I want to keep and then make stands for them so I can actually like put them around my room um, and that type of thing because I think I've got quite a lot of nice whole ones and you just can't have loads of the exact same ammonite. Like I want to get all the different, well not all the different species but I want to get a variety of them whereas I currently fossil hunt in very similar areas so I haven't quite broadened my collection so people have been asking me if you are interested in doing swaps with me um, drop me an email and I'll see what I can do it's not something I've considered yet but um, it might be a good idea because I don't know if you guys have noticed I've got quite a lot of similar fossils <laughs> so um, if some of you don't have access to this type of thing I would be open to maybe doing some swaps or that type of thing but drop me an email and we can go from there but yeah they are just gorgeous so this one unfortunately it's not fully cleaned up in the middle but it's got love this one has a lovely like color to it i just love all my fossils <laughs> so what else oh this is another crystallized one so I am of the mentality if I don't take a fossil from the beach it will just get destroyed by like the elements which I know is how it's meant to be but yeah I'm just like I feel like I have to save it even though I've got six billion um but yeah just look at that and then all the crystals down the back so they're all just really unique in their own way which is why I, I just love them all ah. I will find space or homes for them all Look how perfect that guy is. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. No, but I do think it's important for me to make little kits up for the local schools. Um, just because I don't think they have the facilities necessarily to put together nice boxes for the kids to see. Um, and it just, I think it really enhances the learning experience if, you know, they can actually hold them, feel them, be like, wow, this actually did exist. I think that's pretty cool and they can actually look at you know how it's just the hard parts that get preserved not all the soft parts and I just think it really helps with the learning experience but um here's another bit of a nautiloid so I've only ever found small whole nautiloids I need to like hunt for nautiloids and I really want to find a whole ichthyosaur I know if I actually found one I probably wouldn't be able to keep it because there's no way I would be carrying that off the beach um, even with all my amazing superhero strength when I find a cool fossil I don't think that would be coming home with me but um, just be so cool to find one but maybe I'll just you know if I could just find some vertebrae or the skull that would be great <laughs> a girl can dream so here we just have some of the little ones I think this one's turned out really sweet it's literally you know it's, it's got a perfect center and then it's the rest of the ammonite that's gone and then the outside is perfect as well like how cool is that i should put a chain through it should i wear it as a pendant i don't know if you guys have noticed i always wear like really wacky pendants and this could be one maybe i'll branch into turning some of these into pendants so what do we have these have turned out kind of cute a few of them are kind of naff so I'll leave the naff ones, but these ones have turned out quite pretty. That one especially, like, how perfect is that? Beautiful. Love it. Right, we're coming to, oh no, we've got some bellum knights. How could I forget the bellum knights? Da, da, da. So I think these bellum knights I'll just put in my jar for now, because... I don't really know what to, like I have a few, I've got one really good bellum night and then the rest are just all kind of like fragments which they're still like cool because they're all mineralized inside I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, let's see if it focuses 
Come on, camera. You can see all the mineral rings inside it. Maybe, there. Just, you can kind of see like the rings inside, which I think is really cool to look at. So that's that. I don't really know lots about vellum knights. Like I can never tell you different species of them like I can with ammonites. I don't, maybe I need to do some reading into vellum knights. That could be some, something fun to do during lockdown. Do some reading. And then this is the, <laughs> the one with the massive hole in it, which is just cleaned up quite nicely. Something unusual. Again, this might be good for jewelry makers to somehow turn that into something wearable. It's probably more of a belt buckle. I would think anyway, it's a bit big for a necklace. But if you're brave enough. So I've got an ammonite and a belemnite. The perfect duo. That's quite a nice belemnite actually. It's actually got the point still. Um, pretty much got the point. It's broken slightly, but I like those. Loads of little ammonites. Ooh. You know I forget I collect so many little ones. I don't think I've ever looked at a really cute little ammonite and thought, I'll leave that. <laughs> like, look at this one's cleaned up beautifully. Like both sides as well. That's just the cutest little ammonite. Some are better than others, but that's how it always is. Look, look, look how well these have cleaned up. That's like pretty much perfect. So this one, only one side is perfect, but it's a really nice side, that one. And then the back of it's still got its rock on it, but I think that's still lovely. Same with this one. One side, it's kind of gone through the walls, this one a little bit by the look of it, but it's still, still there. <laughs> still surviving and then what do we have here we have another cute little one so sweet da, da. oh and then this one's really cute look how tiny this one is Ooh. i don't drop it on the floor first just the perfect little ammonite so cute And another one. Adorable. Yeah, I think I'm going to make up. I'll see how many little ones I have. And I'll keep a few in like a little jar just because I love ammonites. And then, you know, I'll see just how many I have. Because it might be that I can actually give them away to schools to like give to the kids to keep. So I can inspire a whole generation of mini paleontologists. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Just because if I've got like a hundred little ones, that's a few classes of kids that can actually take one home. Maybe I'm onto something there. I'll have to see if that's something I can do. Obviously it won't be till end, like probably September time that I can actually get anything to the schools because of the virus, but I've got a lot of prep to do in the meantime. So maybe I'll look at doing that. I was just, that's a different ammonite type. Look at that. To the Dactylosauruses. Very cute. That's a very sweet little one. Then these ones are just, not perfect, but not not perfect, if that makes sense. They're kind of just... Oh, I caught it. Oh, that was cool. They're just like the perfect... If it focuses... Hmm. Yeah. Imperfectly perfect little ones. That's those. Right, what's left? We've got this one. I think this is a shell. It's got some coarse ribbing on it, whatever it is, but there's only part of it, so... What do you guys think that is? Is that? I don't think it's part of an ammonite. Might be. It's just remnants of a shell that once lived. Focus. Okay, I don't think my camera wants to focus for you guys. Maybe it's because it's shiny. Does that make a difference? Hello. There you go. So you can like see the coarse ribbing on it. It's something, something different maybe. Right, I think, oh, we've got, we've got some more tiny little runaways. Da, da, da. Oh, 
Oh, there's loads of little runaways. Forgot how many little ones I put in here. <laughs> God, there's so much mud at the bottom of this tub. Right, I think that's all of it. Okay. Right. So we've got some teeny tiny ones. Look at that little guy. So sweet. And then we've got this one. Which is also pretty perfect. Then this is the... Right, this is going to test my brachypod bivalve knowledge. This is a... A brachypod because the two halves aren't symmetrical. Yes, I'm going to go with that, or well, I'll double check myself later, but it's just a cute smooth shell one. Um, I, I found quite a few brachypods and bivalves, but I don't like have loads considering how many ammonites I have. I probably, you know, I probably found about 10 nice ones in my hunting time, so I need to put those all together once I sort them, so I don't keep resorting them. I'll put the um, brachypod one in my cabinets though so I can actually get that one processed. It's only ammonites that I have like masses and masses of. I'm just an ammonite magnet. It's a problem really. But um, yeah, it's just something about them. Just can't get enough. And I also think it's where I collect, they are the most common, so yeah. This guy is, he's got a perfect middle, does he? Not a perfect middle, but the middle is still there. If it's got a nice hole as well, so maybe I'll make something out of this one as well. Um, and then we've got this little guy. Just trying to hide my face so it'll focus. Which is also very cute. And then these ones are very sweet. This one's got kind of... It's very small, so it needs to focus for you guys to be able to see it. It's got a lot of, like, suture detailing it's it's been through the walls a bit but you can kind of see it. it's really small don't know if it's going to focus enough it's got a lot going on for a little ammonite that one and then i've just got these two cute ones just like that so oh it's quite the um achievement here these are all washed and i've got to say i don't actually think i need to wash them again like, I might rinse them under the tap before I put them in my room or something, but they're pretty much... pretty much mud-free currently. But maybe I can give them a... some of the bigger ones might need a bit of a brush down, but they're not bad. They're a lot better than they were, like I can actually pick these up now and not get muddy, which is a nice thing. And I like my nautiloid, it's kind of weird how it's... you can now literally see in the joints. Well, that's quite cool to look at, I think. Look at that. No, very cool. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me wash my fossils. There's quite a lot to go through, so I'm now going to try and process this lot once it's fully dry. Then I'm going to have to sort another load um, to then wash again. So hopefully I'll start finding something other than ammonites, but chances are that's pretty much all I pick up. But I think I've got some nice plant fossils to go through at some point, so they won't need much washing, but they'll just need like a nice rinse to kind of get the dust off and that type of thing. So lots to be done but mm, i need to kind of work out how i'm storing these now so i need to find little pots for the washed ones and be like these are my washed tiny ammonites and these are the ones i want to keep and these are the ones that can go so i've got lots of organizing to do but anyway i am waffling i hope this video isn't really long but probably is so i hope i haven't bored you too much with all my fossils this is what they all look like dry so most of the mud is gone some might need a second round just to brush off the tricky areas to get to but they look pretty good i think some of the little ammonites didn't turn out the best so those ones like these types of ones i think i'll just move on because don't really have the facilities to prep such tiny ones and um yeah i've got so many that are lovely i don't think i need those so i'll just put them in my parents shingle or something like that but i just thought you guys might want to have a closer view of 
the fossils so they've turned up pretty good I think this is definitely one of my favorite ones and then yeah no I'm happy so that's those so that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you thought of today's wash video and if you'd like to see more of this type of thing or what you'd like to see more of. Um, but I'll link my social media down below in the description box if you're on Instagram. Um, but yeah, look after yourselves, stay safe, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.